Hi everyone, welcome to the second lesson on Fundamentals of Robotics. Today's lesson is about the configuration of the robot. We will talk about the configuration space and topology of the configuration space. And finally, we will talk about different ways to represent the configuration space. I'm Dr. Madison Bobay Esso, and I have a PhD in mechanical engineering. I worked mostly on robotics and mechatronics projects during my master's and PhD work. My research has been featured in several media, including the Daily Evergreen, this article with the name of researchers developing a new doll, and WSU Insider, among others. I had the honor to be featured on the cover of the MME and Robotics and Autonomous Systems Initiative magazines. I was honored by the Society of Women Engineers to be the winner of 2019 Wanda Moon Scholarship for Outstanding Academic Achievement and Strong Engineering Potential. I am a reviewer for several prestigious uh, conferences and journals. And until this point, I have conducted 30 peer reviews for these conferences and journals. I also served as a judge for several competitions for Society of Women Engineers, or SUI, and mentor for several programs, including SUI Mentoring Program, an IEEE e Mentor Program to inspire young women and children to be engaged in engineering. I published a considerable number of publications in prestigious conferences and uh, journals in the robotics field. And my publications have gained more than 170 citations from the scientific community thus far. You can follow my work life on LinkedIn. This is my LinkedIn. You can see my different projects, what I've done so far where I've studied and all those kind of things. And my Corridum Instagram. And be sure to subscribe to our channel, my Corridum, on YouTube to stay up to date on the latest lessons on robotics and mechatronics. Be sure to also visit our website at www.mechorhythm.com to read the lessons in more detail. Go to Macarithm blog and read the lessons in more detail or download any files needed. All right, with this brief introduction getting out of the way, let's get started. The configuration of something answers the question, where is that thing? For example, in order to know where a door is, we only need to know the angle about its hinge when it changes from 0 to 2 pi, then the configuration of the door can be defined. In order to know the configuration of a point on a plane, we need to, de we need to know the x and y coordinates of that plane. Suppose that this is a y-axis and this is an x-axis. So to know the configuration of a point on a plane, we need the x and y coordinates of this point. The configuration of a robot is also our answer to the question, where is the robot? By definition, the configuration of the robot is the specification of the position of all points on the robot. And the space of all configurations of the robot is called the configuration space of the robot. The configuration of the robot is a point in its configuration space. Let's see this with an example. Consider a two degrees of freedom planar toy robot that I have here. It has two degrees of freedom because the two joints provide two ra rotational degrees of freedom. We will talk about a no, degrees of freedom in the next video. For now, we are mostly interested in the configuration space of this robot. Suppose that the two angles, this is the first angle from the horizon, and this is the second angle from, suppose that we can extend the link one and the second angle is with respect to the link one. Suppose that 
um, the two angles can freely change in between 0 and 2 pi. The first link can trace a circle. You see, it can trace a circle in its configuration. And also, for every angle of joint one, so suppose that we have this angle for joint one, the second link can also trace a circle. For another angle, it can trace a circle. For another angle, it can trace a circle. For another angle, it can trace a circle too. By simulating this, we can see that the C space of a two-link robot arm has a torus or donut shape. In fact, the C space is the two-dimensional surface of a donut. For every configuration of the robot, there is a unique point on the torus. And if for every point on the torus, there is a unique configuration of the robot. So the configuration of this robot can be represented by its two joint angles. We saw that the shape of the configuration space of a two degrees of freedom planar robot is a torus or a donut. We call the shape of the configuration space the topology of the space, and it's a fundamental property of that space. And this means that no matter how we represent the space, the uh, shape or topology of this configuration space is the same. So it's the fundamental property of that space. Now let's discuss some important notes about the topology. A plane and the surface of a sphere are both two-dimensional spaces. But you can see that the shapes are completely different. We call two spaces to be topologically equivalent or of the same shape if we can smoothly deform one shape to the other without cutting or gluing. For example, you can deform a coffee mug into a torus without cutting or gluing, so they are topologically equivalent. You can also deform a cow into a sphere too, so they are also topologically equivalent but you cannot deform a torus into a plane and vice versa because this action would require cutting or gluing. You can see in this movie that the action of changing from plane to a torus needs gluing and the action of changing from a torus to a plane needs cutting. So they cannot be topologically equivalent shapes. The next thing that we want to discuss are some of the n-dimensional spaces and their topologies. First, we start with one-dimensional spaces. A circle is a one-dimensional space, and the topology of a circle is S1. A line is also a one-dimensional Euclidean or flat space. And the topology is called E1 or R1, referring to real numbers. A closed interval of a line is a subset of a one-dimensional space. And it's not topologically equivalent to a line because we cannot stretch a closed interval of a line to the line. But open interval of a line is topologically equivalent to a line because it can be stretched to a line. Now let's see some 2D spaces. A plane is a two-dimensional space with the topology of e, E2, which is a 2D flat space, a Euclidean flat space. The surface of a sphere is also a 2D space, and the topology is called S2. Note that the Cartesian product of two circles is not a surface of a sphere. Uh, it's a torus, as we are going to see. A 2D surface of a torus is a Cartesian product of two circles, as we saw in the simulation, and it's called T2. And finally, a 2D surface of a cylinder is the Cartesian product of one-dimensional Euclidean space and a circle. These are all um, two-dimensional spaces, but with different topologies. So we can say that C spaces of the same dimension can have different topologies. Now let's see 
how we can represent the Z space. The topology of a point on a plane, as we've seen before, is a 2D surface of a plane, which is a 2D Euclidean space, and the topology is E2. We can represent the point um, on a plane with two coordinates, the x and y of that point on the plane. This is a simple representation of a point on a plane. Now let's see how we can represent the point on a surface of a sphere. A point on a surface of a sphere has a topology of the 2D surface of the sphere, and it can be represented by two minimum coordinates, latitude and longitude. The longitude changes from uh, minus 180 degrees to 180 degrees, and the latitude changes from mi minus 90 degrees to 90 degrees. On Earth, the negative values correspond to the south and west uh, of the Earth. Norstad, the two edges with arrows are glued together. Since the representation is with only two numbers, the latitude and the longitude, which forms a plane, uh, and we cannot deform the plane into a sphere and vice versa without cutting or gluing, then the sphere and the plane don't have the same topology, and this is troublesome. And this means that uh, the 2D surface of a sphere is represented by a plane which they don't have the same topology, so this can be troublesome. The reason that this can be troublesome is that the representation will definitely have singularities. We will see this with a simple example of a 2R robot arm in the next now step. let's go back to our 2R planar robot. As we saw before, the topology of the configuration space of a 2R planar robot is a torus. In topology, as we saw before, a 2D surface of a torus is the Cartesian product of two one-dimensional circles. The configuration space can then be represented by two angles, theta1 and theta2, ranging from 0 to 2 pi. Note that the edges with arrows are glued together. Now let's see a a simulation of the C space of this robot and see why representing the uh, C space of this robot with only two numbers can have singularities. I start with zero configuration for the joint one. Then I start to increase the joint one angle from zero to two pi. Look what happens when I cross two pi. You can see it suddenly jumps from one edge to the other. The reason for this is the same reason that we discussed for the 2, 2D surface of a sphere. The way that we represent the 2D surface of a torus is by two numbers theta1 and theta2 that form a plane. A torus is not topologically equivalent to a plane, since we need to cut the torus to get a plane. And as we saw before, this will, be, uh, this will cause singularities in the representation, and this is the reason that the coordinate representation changes discontinuously at 0 and 2 pi. After all, 0 and 2 pi represent the same orientation. Until this point, we have learned that uh, representing a configuration space with minimum number of coordinates can have singularities, like representing a two-dimensional surface of a sphere with latitude and longitude, and representing a two-dimensional surface of a torus with two angles from 0 to 2 pi. We live in a flat Euclidean space, and we also love to represent the curves in this space. What if we can embed the curves in a higher dimensional Euclidean space? Wouldn't that be amazing? We will get rid of the singularities, right? Suppose that we want to represent the point on a circle. We can do this by choosing an angle theta from the center of the circle to the point with respect to a chosen zero angle. The theta changes from zero to two pi. And as we saw before, uh, there would be a singularity at zero and two pi because they literally represent the same point in the circle. A circle is a one dimensional curved space. So representing it with minimal number of coordinates that a theta had would definitely have singularities. One possible solution is to embed the one-dimensional circle into a two-dimensional Euclidean space subject to one constraint that all points in the circle 
are at the same distance from the center of the circle. Two coordinates minus one constraint, and this will give us a one-dimensional space where the circle belongs to. This is called an implicit representation of the C space in contrast to the explicit representation that uses the minimal uh, number of coordinates to represent the space. And the reason that we do this is to avoid singularities. The same is for the 2D surface of a sphere. We can represent the configuration space with minimum number of coordinates that match the dimension of the C space that are latitude and longitude. And this representation will have singularities or represent the C space with the curved space embedded in, in a flat Euclidean space of higher dimension subject to constraints. Three coordinates minus one constraint gives us two, 2D space that the surface of a sphere belongs to. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. And I also hope that you get a good understanding of the configuration, configuration space, and the topology of the configuration space. In the next video, we will talk about the degrees of freedom of the robot. And we will see that using the Grubler's formula, you can find the degrees of freedom of any mechanism, not just the robots. See you in the next video.